Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Chef Gambino's Gluten-Free Adventures. Today's adventure has nothing to do with food, and has everything to do with New York Comic Con, and the costume that I'm going to be wearing on Friday. Now, last year I dressed up as uh, Santa Deadpool, or Deadpool as Santa Claus. The year before that was um, Hamburglar for President. So I take two ideas and I mash them up into something. And this year's mashup, there's two different mashups. Uh, the second mashup, which is going to be Saturday's costume, is Chef Deadpool. And you can see um, what that looks like at uh, whoisdeadpoolnow.wordpress.com. And you can also go to Instagram and search for at the chef is Deadpool. So, uh, you know, when Deadpool became Santa, you know, it was easy. Santa, Deadpool. Um, now, the chef is Deadpool is who is the chef or who was the chef because, unfortunately, the chef is dead. Dot, 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 pool. That's how the story is titled, the story that this uh, character is being based on. So the chef that I chose to emulate on Friday is none other than Mario Batali. Uh, I've seen him live, um, I want to say twice, because I've been to the taping of his cooking show, The Chew, um, twice, and I believe he was there both times. So I've seen him in real life, which is pretty cool. Um, I never saw Santa in real life, and somehow I was able to emulate him, so I should be even better at emulating Chef Mario Batali. However, Mario Batali has some characteristics that I don't have. Um, I think he's a little older than I am, that being one characteristic. And he has, um, like, not brown hair. I think it's like orange, red, redhead, ginger, gingerish. Uh, and I don't have that. So, uh, that's gonna be one thing I'm lacking. I might gel my hair back like this, and my hair is not gelled today, so forgive the messiness. But what I do have is some of his other, um, attributes that will, um, help, uh, convince people that that is who I am, or I really want people, if you saw Deadpool just as Santa, easy, easy peasy, even on Saturday when I dress as Chef Deadpool, um, or Chef Pool, uh, that's even going to be easier too, because I have the mask, and I have a chef's hat, and, I have, and I'm going to have an apron, and it's going to click. So how do I convey Mario Batali, and a zombie Mario Batali? I'm not going to do my makeup right now, um, but I'll probably do some zombie makeup um, Friday morning, if not at Comic-Con, here at home. Um, but let's talk about the costume. Makeup is makeup, and I'm not doing a makeup tutorial. That's not my jam. Let's talk about the costume. So, I didn't buy any of the clothes that I'm going to show you. I did buy one thing, and I'm going to show that to you after I show you the clothes. So, I have here a black zipper down vest. It's like windbreaker material. Uh, fleece might have been better, but I feel like this still conveys the message. And I have a pink polo uh, that I bought over the summer that will um, help convey the top half of Mr. Mario Batali. For the bottom half, I have a pair of shorts that are kind of um, colorful. He likes some colored shorts. He will go for a, um, a khaki on occasion, but I feel like this really emulates him well. And I have an orange towel. Not as long or as big as his, um, but I didn't feel like going to the Dollar Tree and buying an orange one or hoping to find an orange one. So I used uh, one of my washcloths. It's clean, I promise. <clears throat> so, you might say to yourself, well, you have a lot of it down, but I don't think you're there all the way. What am I missing? Well, I'm missing the Crocs which is like his signature comfy shoe, 
right? He likes to cook in crocs. Um, I feel like that's not unheard of because they're comfortable. And if you're gonna be on your feet for so many hours, uh, like I'm going to be during Comic-Con, you might wanna wear something comfortable. Now these are not Crocs. These are rubber clogs from Lay Walmart. Because these were $10 versus orange Crocs, which uh, I could have purchased, but they would have been $30. And I did not want to spend $30. I didn't want to spend $10, um, but I really felt like it completed the costume. So what we, you and I, are going to do right now is turn these black Crocs into orange Crocs. I purchased some folk art multi-surface satin acrylic paint that will hopefully help trans fur? transform these black Crocs into the signature Mauro Batali orange Crocs. So stay tuned. I'm going to get the paint poured, pull out my brush, and start painting these bad boys. See you in a minute. Welcome back. Got my paint poured or squeezed out that little tube. Put on some gloves because I don't want to worry about getting my hands dirty and then having to wash them. I'll just kind of keep them underneath here because I don't want some of this multi-surface paint to think my hand is one of its appropriate services. It's not. All right, let's give this a shot. Okay. It's working so far. This is definitely going to use a few coats of paint that will have to be uh, spread out over a few hours. Maybe even a white coat would have been beneficial underneath the orange. Well, let me learn. I guess I'll do a white coat over this orange. So I bought the um, paint from Joanne Fabrics or Joanne's Fabrics. Um, they had a decent amount of uh, acrylic paint. I first went there instead of Michael's, the craft store. Uh, because I really wanted to find a plain black apron. And um, they had a plain white apron that was uh, six bucks, which wasn't the worst thing in the world. It wasn't really for, um, I mean, not that I was going to use it for anything heavy duty, but it, it was uh, very... Um, thin, really not, um, you know, not worth for me, uh, the money. So I, um, this doesn't look half bad. It actually looks kind of cool with the, um, black underneath. It, it's, it almost looks like an intentional pattern. Uh, I promise you it's not. Anyway, Joanne's Fabrics. Yeah, they were, they were very helpful uh, with this uh, paint. They uh, did say to be mindful that the paint might chip or crack um, because it's really made more for rigid surfaces, whereas the shoe is rubber-ish. I don't think you'd call it rubber. I think you just call it plastic. But, um, you know, the shoe is made to be flexible. As flexible as a piece of rubber on your foot could be. 
Um, though this does say non-marking, right? So if you wear this, uh, you won't be able, you won't be scuffing up your floors every time you drag your feet. It makes me think of gym class as a kid. They would say, don't come to gym in sneakers that scuff up the floor. And we would scuff up that floor so much. You know, all you gotta do is run your heel on, on the floor and it'll take whatever, you know, rubber was on your shoe and then transfer it to the floor. All right, I'm gonna finish this shoe and then move on to the next one. Uh, stay tuned. Welcome back. So it's been about an hour, and uh, here is the first coat. It's on there pretty good. It's a little chunky in some spots. I'll have to smooth those over. Not bad for a first coat. I'm going to throw on the second coat right now. Let's see how that looks. It looks much brighter than that first coat, especially since it's not going on pure black. It's going on that orange base. I really did like the way the um, shoe looked with that first base. It actually looked a little bit like wood. It's obviously not wood. But I thought it gave it a real uh, wood grain look. These gloves really came in handy because or else my hand would be full of orange paint. My left hand more so because my right hand is staying pretty clean holding the brush. Alright, I'm going to put on the second coat. And I'll probably put on a third coat as well, but I won't make you watch that one. And when we come back, these shoes will be ready for New York Comic-Con. Stay tuned. Well, here we have our finished product, our orange Crocs. As you can see, they're orange, but they could be a lot more orange if I had put that white base coat on first. This is three coats of multi-purpose acrylic paint on top of a black shoe. So this is as orange as I'm going to get it. Next up on Chef Gambino's Gluten Free Adventures, I'm going to be putting a Deadpool logo on an apron that I got from Ikea. So stay tuned for that episode next time on Chef Gambino's Gluten Free Adventures.